So for those who thought that today is an ending, wake up, it's a whole new day. Tomorrow we begin a fight, and I promise you we will win marriage in New York State. Now let me introduce you. I'm gonna introduce you to a bunch of people tonight who are gonna be key in helping us get there. This is how we know we could win marriage in New York. Five years ago, nobody ever would have thought we would have been talking about marriage equality in New York State. But then again, five years ago, nobody ever would have thought that we would have an out lesbian as the speaker of the New York City Council. Foreman rightfully called her the most powerful out lesbian or gay official in the country, and I think he's right. And with her muscle behind us, and let me tell you, you never want to go up against Christine. We're going to win marriage faster than Albany knows it. Please welcome the New York City Council Speaker, Christine Quinn. Councilmember Jessica Lappin, we have Councilmember Gail Brewer of the Upper West Side, and Councilmember Dan Borodnik, who before being elected was actually one of, part of the legal team that uh, uh, did such great work uh, with this case before the Court of Appeals, so he's been with us even before he was in elected office. to those before thanking Robbie and everyone at Paul Weiss, Lambda Legal Defense, and the ACLU for their great, great work in this case. They are really examples of what is the best and greatest about our community. two ways about it. Today is a sad and disappointing day. And we all have every right to feel that way. To feel disappointed in the decision this court made. To feel disappointed in those judges who couldn't see their way to equality and justice. And to feel disappointed in the elected officials who appointed them to this incredibly important position on our state's highest court. sure that none of us, not the hundreds and hundreds of us who are with us today here or the other members of us, our community, none of us are going to languish in that disappointment. No. That's right, because you know what our enemies want? They want to believe this decision will keep us down. They want to believe we will be defined by this court's ruling. and believe what those justices wrote, but they are wrong. They, they were wrong every time in that 20 year struggle where they prevented the gay rights bill from getting to the floor of the New York City Council. And they were wrong every time in Albany when they prevented gay rights from coming up or from inclusive hate crimes coming up. But what we have shown them time and again is that we are more committed, stronger, and more focused, and more dedicated to what is morally correct than they can or will ever be. Every single civil rights struggle in our community and in other communities has been long and hard. The fight for justice is long and hard. And there are frequently moments of wonderful victory and triumph. And occasionally there are days of disappointment. But if you look 
and every struggle. If you look at one of the last times we were gathered here in a court decision, when we celebrated Lawrence v. Hardwick, we celebrated it overturning a bad ruling. Every single civil rights struggle, if you look at it, the arc of history always bends to what is just and what is morally correct. Every single solitary time. History always falls to justice. It has for our community, it has for so many other communities. But remember that we have to also make sure that happens, that we have to push that arc of history, and that all of us have to continue our personal commitment and our personal responsibility to each other in the weeks and months ahead. Because those who wish to take away our civil rights, as long as we remain united, will never be as strong, as solid, or as large as we are in our community and our allies are.